Hello everybody, I am Ardhindu De and you are watching Edis English Literature. Today, I am going to discuss the most important question. Is William Shakespeare an immortal? Such question pops up in our mind when we read it from our university professors as well as enthusiastic readers that William Shakespeare is such a personality whose literary productions and the thought content has somehow shaped and reshaped the very gamut or the very inflow of English literature, if not the world literature. Obviously, when we are thinking of the immortality of William Shakespeare, it is not that he is biologically mortal. Thinking about how the person can live even after his death, obviously, we are thinking about the immortality of his works, his philosophy, his thoughts. We will make this lecture a little bit of collective analysis on the point of view of Shakespeare's utility. Mostly, we are going to discuss in five basic points or questions. The first one, if Shakespeare's contribution had a lasting influence on history. That is the first question and that carried the most weightage. The second criterion is the Shakespearean effect on the sum total of wisdom and beauty in the world. The next criterion is Shakespeare's influence on contemporaries and how much did Shakespeare affect the world during his own time. Another point of evolution is the singularity of Shakespearean's contribution. The last and final criterion is Shakespeare's charisma or charismatic Shakespeare. But before we carry a detailed discussion on these five criteria, it will be better if I will judge the last millennium and find out the key elements or the key personalities that have shaped or moduled the very inflow of our civilization. Perhaps one of the best ways to examine the sprawling history of human civilization is to consider the most influential people who shaped it, the reflection on the last millennium in science, in social science, in political revolution during the last 1000 years have left an indelible mark on the world that exists today. As far Agnes Hooper Gottlieb, the ten are Johannes Gutenberg, the inventor of printing press, Christopher Columbus, the explorer, Michelangelo, the artist, Martin Luther, the religious leader, William Shakespeare, the writer, Galileo Galilei, the scientist, George Washington, the statesman, Ludwig van Beethoven, the music composer, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the activist, and Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, the peacemaker. These characters, these personages are immortal and they are the immortal contributors of world civilization. This question of Shakespearean immortality may bring the greatest of English poet more distinctly before the minds of some of my students. It may widen the interest, a deep and fresh interest in life. I think the chief exponent in literature of Shakespeare must be studied in the near future with a deeper recognition of the significance of his works and its value as a source of spiritual culture. I mean the culture that attaches or bridges one to another. His plays have been written in those aspects 
which throw light on the dramatist's life, thoughts, his art format, the many and the interesting questions which have been discussed with great ingenuity and at great length by Shakespearean scholars have been touched upon only as they directly reflect or affect the history of thought or the continuation of the art of poetry. Here we can read the great writers on Shakespeare or their critical views. We can have plenty of critical writers in the way of understanding Shakespeare. From the early dawn of those Elizabethan or post-Elizabethan writers Ben Johnson or Dr. Johnson and even Wordsworth, Coldridge and in the modern section T.S. Eliot, even Edja Pound, everybody has tried their hand in understanding Shakespeare and their evolution of this master has also been put into discussion. William Shakespeare the English playwright and poet is recognized in much of the world as the greatest of all dramatists. Hundreds of editions of his plays have been published, including translations in all major languages. Scholars have written thousands of books and articles about his plots, characters, themes and languages. And myself with my limited knowledge is trying hard to represent Shakespeare before you. He is the most widely quoted author in history and his plays have probably been performed more times than those of any other dramatist in the world. You can see the full list of his writings on the screen. Probably I would not go into details of those writings, but you probably know every of the writing piece by their names. The sheer volume of his writing produced in the last 1000 years is tragic, especially with Gutenberg's invention. A world of words was created that has continued to grow exponentially. There is a galaxy of brilliant writers from which to select one writer as the most influential in the second millennium. In reality, there is only one person who has the literary resume to even apply for the job, William Shakespeare. You can see the voluminous writing and the variegated writing with full of life. Nearly 400 years after his death, the English playwright and poet William Shakespeare remains the most influential writer who ever lived. Shakespeare's central canon of 38 plays and a series of 154 odd sonnets is the standard against all other writers unmeasured. His language, characters, plots, weeds are all consistently brilliant. Tragedies such as Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth have survived the centuries with their beauty and power intact and remain one of the most popular and oft-produced plays. His comedies including A Midsummer Night's Dream Twelfth Night, still charming and entertaining. As many critics have observed, the tragic flow and comic conceits depicted in Shakespearean plays are just as relevant as the early 21st century as they were when the plays were written in the late 16th or early 17th century. Evolution of Shakespeare allowed the consideration of artistic contributions such as Beethoven, Sonata, a Michelangelo, Fresco or a Shakespearean sonnet 
that may not have directly altered the history books but without which world culture would not be as rich as it is and this is not my personal view many of the critics have said that one should go through the lens of these creators the man who is sometimes known simply as the bard also heavily influenced the english language which has emerged as the dominant tongue of the western world he created and popularized many words that survive in the english language today and his famed lines are arguably the best known in all of the literatures get the to a nanari the lady do protest too much and it too brute and just a few of the many shakespearean lines till commonly quoted other languages have their beloved writers but all languages and lands pay homage to shakespeare there is no simple explanation for shakespeare's unrivaled popularity but he remains our greatest entertainer and perhaps our most profound thinker he had a remarkable knowledge of human behavior which he was able to communicate through his portrayal of a wide variety of characters he was able to enter fully into the point of view of each of his characters and to create a vivid panorama a vivid dramatic situation in which to explore human motivations and behavior his mastery of poetic language and of the techniques of drama enabled him to combine these multiple point of views and human motives and actions to produce a uniquely compelling theatrical presentation a theatrical experience numerous writers have mined shakespeare so as the generations of writers it is also evident that it will continue the same in newer future or the future of human civilization in the criterion of singularity of contribution shakespeare is recognized as a singular brilliance charting entirely new territory a plain and practical narrative of the great dramatist's personal history tells us everything with a full record of the duly attested facts and dates i have seen in shakespeare's character the aesthetic brilliance shakespearean literature as far as it is concerned to me still amazes us and will amaze or in my lifetime i will be able to read him completely or not that's a question after studying world literature history and bibliography we can get the processions of literature and theaters directly or indirectly related to this great master as we are discussing somebody is writing or thinking about the conditions under which love's lovers lost and the merchant of venice were written the references in shakespeare's plays to the native town and country his relationship with ben johnson and the boy actors in in 1601 the the favor extended to his work by james wan the circumstances which led to the publication of the first polio and the history of the damascus portraits so on so these are the characters the researchers are pouncing on and they are studying further 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 only to understand the great charisma of the man we call shakespeare william shakespeare may not have been intellectual giants noted for pot breaking new discoveries but he nevertheless exerted 
great influences by virtue of his ability to inspire other people to imagine to see the world as he sees william shakespeare is a charismatic writer no doubt he lived in a play loving age with great processions of simple people with great predecessors like university wits but he read the illiterate crowds gave them what they wanted and simply reflected their own thoughts and feelings so he had the favorable atmosphere but he was sipped and enriched by two great hemispheres the little village of stratford and the great city of london in stratford he learned to know the natural man in his natural environment natural surrounding in london he learned to know the social the artificial man in the most unnatural of surroundings knowledge endowed to these places are shakespeare's own charismatic shakespeare is everywhere in his works his great tragedies othello lear macbeth and hamlet are stuffed with new what pictures new characters both historical and imaginary with a surpassing vividness othello lear macbeth and hamlet or rosaline portia juliet cleopatra caesar brutus orlando shylock falstaff tristan there is endless variety shakespeare is universal as he is a master artist of human characters as well as human psychology and reading all these criteria on we can say shakespeare is charismatic my lecture has covered a very small portion of the wide field of shakespeare but i have gone far enough i think to justify the conviction that shakespeare's collection of sonnets and dramas has reasonable resources to be regarded as an infinite narrative we can say he is immortal like other great men william shakespeare also had his own critics i must quote here some of the great writers or rivals or critics or other commentators with varying assessments of the bard's work now notably there is ben jonson ben jonson in his first folio of shakespeare's collected works which was published in 1623 he thinks he has not of an age but for all time but robert green a contemporary writer and the university we call him an upstart crow ben jonson in timber or discoveries published which was published in 1641 says wherein he flowed with that facility that sometime it was necessary he should be stopped john dryden essay on dramatic poesy which was published in 1668 he thinks that shakespeare is many times flat insipid his comic wit degenerating into clinches his serious swelling into bombast horas walpole thinks shakespeare wanted test to voltaire he was a savage samuel johnson quoted in life of johnson uh, which was written by james boswell published in 1769 that shakespeare never had six lines together without a fault now the story continues the criticism is there the pros and cons are there shakespeare is a crutch a understanding a way to understand or comprehend the english literature or the world literature as a whole many of the critics many of the writers directly evaluating shakespeare and understanding him understanding him in different ways 
The valuations or revaluations of these great artists is done everywhere. We are also doing the same. Now, immortality of that personage of William Shakespeare is no doubt a fact. We will, in fact, celebrate one thing that in the long run of human civilization, if there remains the existence of any literature, any culture, we can proudly say that there will be a William Shakespeare, a great writer or a personage who should be remembered forever in the history of human civilization. If you think this lecture goes fruitful to you, you can like, share and comment here. Or if you want to ask any question regarding this, you can promptly ask me. I will try my best to give some answers. So bye bye. Thank you.